जय हिंद एवरी वन टुडे विल बी अगेन टेकिंग दिस इंग्लिश ग्रामर अ बिट फॉरवर्ड इन द लास्ट सेशन वी हैव सीन वेरी बेसिक्स ऑफ इंग्लिश ग्रामर एंड टुडे विल जस्ट मूव स्टेप फॉरवर्ड नाउ लेट अस फर्स्ट रिवाइज व्हाट वी हैव स्टडीड इन द लास्ट क्लास एज वी ऑल डू एज इट वॉज वेरी सिंपल बट स्टिल टू जस्ट मेनटेन अ कंटिन्यूटी लेट्स जस्ट सी वॉट इट इज first we have seen alphabets alphabets are set of letters there are 26 alphabets in english language these alphabets are combined they are put in fixed order to represent special sound a fixed sound of english language among these five were vowels and 21 were consonants and again we have seen that they are combined in fixed order to form what words now we have seen words are combination of alphabet they are single distinct a word is a single distinct fill and meaningful element of speech it is distinct and meaningful element of a speech or even writing not only speaking also of writing it is a distinct element it has a specific meaning these are combined to give special meaning the picture above we have also seen that these are words used in english but they have different origin okay so after that we have seen what sentences are sentences are we have seen sentences are group of words that express complete thought and the general definition as you all know of sentences combination of word that makes complete sense is called a sentence we have also seen when we are making a sentence we do two things there first thing we name a person or thing second thing we say something about it thus subject is what subject is what the name of the person or thing we speak about and predicate is the part of sentence which tells about the subject see in this thing we have seen you have to ask question who or what along with the verb so as to identify the subject also one thing you have to remember usually subject is put at first but occasionally sometimes subject is also put after the predicate for example we say ram is playing here ram is the subject which is put at first but in case we say sweet are the uses of adversity bure samay ke bhi jo महत्व है जो यूज है वो भी अच्छा होता है वी लर्न समथिंग फ्रॉम इट सो हियर वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द एडवर्सिटी सब सब्जेक्ट इज एडवर्सिटी बट वॉट वी से स्वीट आर द यूज ऑफ एडवर्सिटी एडवर्सिटी बींग द सब्जेक्ट इज केप्ट एट लास्ट सो दिस ऑल्सो हैपन्स सो इट्स नॉट नेसेसरी दैट सब्जेक्ट कम्स फर्स्ट डोंट कीप दैट इन योर माइंड एवर also in imperative sentences i have many times mentioned in the last video that the subject is omitted is left out for example i have to say i you sit down i'll say sit down i won't say you sit down that you is understood for example if i have to say thank you i won't say i thank you yeah i'm thankful to you i just we will just say thank you and that's it so that is what in imperative sentence the subject is left out so you just have to understand on your own thereafter we have seen here the definition of subject it's a part of the sentence which names the person or thing we are speaking of thereafter we have seen predicate it's a part of the sentence that says about the subject so very normally this we have seen very normal things it was this is very important as i have mentioned in the last video also that this is very basic but you people usually skip you don't take care of these things what it is see when you write a sentence a sentence should begin with a capital letter and end with a period see while writing a sentence whenever we are putting some break in the sentence we use comma okay or semicolon we use for giving a short break okay but to end the sentence we can use this punctuation mark like full stop means the sentence is complete it's a statement for a question you can put a note of interrogation that is question mark for some sudden surprise if you are expressing you can use a note of exclamation that is exclamation mark 
secondly a subject should have a complete thought a complete sense complete meaning thirdly sentence must have at least one independent clause what are independent clause the clauses which have at least one subject plus plus what one verb example ram is playing we have ram one subject and one verb main verb playing helping verb is so this uh, independent clause should be there an independent clause should be present in a sentence so while from next time onwards when you form a sentence please keep these things in mind okay now moving forward today we will see what we'll see the types of sentences types of sentences now you must have seen that sentences are of declarative four types statement that is declarative or assertive or then imperative to give order or request interrogative to ask question exclamatory to express sudden feeling but have you ever thought that there are different dimensions of division of sentence category of sentence yes it is see on the basis of their function there are four types and on the basis of their structure there are of three types this is very general thing functionally they are of four main types that is what declarative imperative interrogative and exclamatory De declarate we'll go in detail with every type of sentence not to worry and on the basis of their structure the number of clauses that they contain there are of three types simple complex and compound now let us see in detail on the basis of their function for example if it is simply saying something then it will be a statement which is also called declarative sentence or assertive sentence you must be knowing okay so this is its function that it's saying something generally so it is declarative sentence declaring something it's interrogating something means it's asking something so on this is its function so on the basis of function we will see one by one the first one is declarative sentence it is also called assertive sentence or it is also called statement okay an assertive sentence is one which simply states something expresses an opinion or feeling that is it makes a statement or it just describes something as as its name suggests what the name is declarative declarative means it's declaring something it declares something and to mark the end of declarative sentence to mark that it got ended what do we use we use a full stop for example if, if i am generally saying i want to be a good cricketer it's my feeling i want to be a good cricketer it's a statement see normal statement i'm declaring something and it ends with a full stop just to go a step forward in it if you see this declarative sentences in themselves they are of three types affirmative i'm saying i want to be a good cricketer it's a positive sentence i'm just stating something a fact event or a thing i'm telling something i'm declaring my feeling but if i'm saying no i don't want to become a cricketer there also i'm expressing my opinion or feeling it's also declarative statement but it is negative so we have seen affirmative when it's positive affirmation confirmation positiveness it shows when there's negation no or not okay is indicated then it is negative sentence it expresses denial or refusal i am refusing something i am denying something i don't want something to happen so to express that we use negative sentences they are also declarative they are also we declare something but with negation third type is emphatic it makes a strong forceful statement which shows its importance there also we declare something for example in affirmative sentences i said mohan wrote a letter okay in negative sentences i told there's example of negative sentence i told mohan did not write a letter so first one was mohan wrote a letter affirmative or positive second one mohan did not write a letter negative third one 
you do know the secret that mohan writes letter or you do know the secret you do know see i'm emphasizing i'm forcefully putting something a forceful statement i'm saying that you do do know the secret you are knowing i know that you know the secret that mohan does tell lies mohan झूठ बोलता है और ये बात आपको पता है यू डू नो द सीक्रेट एंड आई एम हियर ऑल्सो आई एम डिक्लेयरिंग बट आई एम पुटिंग एम्फेसिस ऑन इट एम्फेसाइजिंग टू मेक अ स्ट्रॉन्ग और फोर्सफुल स्टेटमेंट टू शो इट इज इम्पॉर्टेंट सो वी हैव सीन दिस डिक्लेरेटिव सेंटेंस इज ऑल्सो ऑफ थ्री टाइप्स अफर्मेटिव दैट इज पॉजिटिव नेगेटिव एंड थर्ड वन इज एम्फेटिक वेन इट पुट्स सम एम्फेसिस second one imperative sentence imperative sentence is used to make a request or to give a command please sit down as we have seen please sit down means you have to sit down here i am requesting but if i say just sit down it will be a command so either to make a request or to give a command we use imperative sentences it is used to express a command or a request or even an advice for example help the needy advice or an entreaty entreaty means if somebody is going from your home they came for a visit and they are leaving what do you say phir aayega do pay us visit that is called entreaty so this is also imperative sentence so imperative sentence also has four types when we give command shut the door when we request please help me or please sit down when we advise something help the needy means you should help the needy where the subject is again omitted do pay us visit entreaty okay so it usually ends with period means that is full stop example if i am saying shut the door full stop please help me but for please help me you can say full stop but in circumstances if there are some circumstances a sudden expression in imperative sentences also you can get angry and express something suddenly there then we can use exclamation mark also i hope you understood so we have seen first declarative sentence jo declare karta hai state karta hai statement hoti hai jisme स्टेटमेंट अपने आप में तीन टाइप के होते हैं थ्री टाइप्स एक पॉजिटिव जब हम हाँ हाँ बोल रहे हैं दैट इज कॉल्ड अफर्मेटिव एक जब हम डिनाई कर रहे हैं मना कर रहे हैं रिफ्यूज कर रहे हैं तो वो नेगेटिव एक जब हम किसी चीज़ पर स्ट्रॉन्गली एम्फेसाइज कर रहे हैं फोर्सफुल स्टेटमेंट दे रहे हैं जबरदस्ती बताने की कोशिश कर रहे हैं ये दिखाने की कि वो ज़रूरी है वो इम्पॉर्टेंट है तब वो एम्फेटिक सेंटेंस कहलाएगा so declarative sentence three types affirmative negative and emphatic we have seen imperative imperative have like four types you can say kyunki it can give command it can give request it can express advice it can also express entreaty and general cases it ends with a full stop but in case of some sudden feeling expression you can use exclamation mark also interrogative sentences very basic it is it inquires or ask a question okay it ends with the note of interrogation that is question mark when are you going to submit your assignment you people are not doing anything at home right all these things you can write down in your copy it will help uh, you in your future also not only this class every class it will help you with these are very basic things so and in everything we are learning something extra so pay attention to it okay interrogative sentence can also be positive or negative remember that it's not necessary that interrogative sentences are always positive for example if i said where is your father or what is your father doing it's positive but if i am asking didn't he finish his homework again this is negation we include in not so it became negative and it ends with the note of interrogation interrogate or asking question that is question mark 
exclamatory sentences exclamatory sentences expresses overflow of emotion when we are talking then also we are expressing ourselves for example if i said i want to become a cricketer i'm expressing myself but when we have overflow of emotion sudden overflow then we use exclamatory sentences these emotions can be happiness wonder surprise wonder means surprise sorrow anger etc okay so about something when we have different kind of feeling about something that that should be sudden then we use exclamatory sentences to express that feeling and these sentences end with the mark of exclamation a note of exclamation that is exclamation mark what a day it was exclamation mark <coughs> next we'll see optative sentences optative sentence is see this is not written and generally it is not taught also we usually express our blessings in exclamatory sentences only but there there's a type of sentences usually it's not taught but just to mention it i'm mentioning there's when we give blessing or when we express our wish may you live long may god may god help us so all when we say this a wish our wish something that we wish for we categorize it under optative sentences not necessarily but see optative the word itself means relating to mood so it can come under the category of exclamatory sentences but sometimes also it's kept separately so it's your wish i just mentioned it so that you might be knowing about it okay secondly we will see sentence structure on the basis of their structure sentence types of sentence on the basis of their structure we have seen there are of three types simple compound and complex very easy it is very easy see we have seen what are sentences okay and we have also seen to form a sentence there should be one independent clause aur independent clause banta kaise hai ek subject hona chahiye और एक वर्ब होना चाहिए और जो सेंटेंस बने फॉर एग्जांपल राम इज प्लेइंग वो किसी पे निर्भर ना रहे वो किसी पे डिपेंडेंट ना रहे देन इट इज कॉल्ड इंडिपेंडेंट क्लॉज विल जस्ट सी व्हाट क्लॉज इज सी क्लॉज व्हाट आर क्लॉजेस क्लॉजेस आर अ ग्रुप ऑफ वर्ड कंटेनिंग अ सब्जेक्ट एंड प्रेडिकेट एंड फंक्शनिंग एज अ मेंबर ऑफ कॉम्प्लेक्स और कंपाउंड सेंटेंस तो ये भी ग्रुप ऑफ वर्ड्स है सेंटेंसेस आर आल्सो ग्रुप ऑफ वर्ड्स दैट मेक कंप्लीट सेंस एंड क्लॉजेस आर आल्सो ग्रुप ऑफ वर्ड्स सेंटेंसेस आल्सो कंटेन सब्जेक्ट एंड प्रेडिकेट क्लॉजेस आल्सो कंटेन सब्जेक्ट एंड प्रेडिकेट बट द डिफरेंस इज कि क्लॉज सेंटेंस मे होते हैं क्लॉज क्या होते हैं सेंटेंस मे होते हैं उपवाक्य से हिंदी में कहते हैं दैट इफ अ सेंटेंस इज रिटर्न एंड वी वॉन्ट टू एड समथिंग एडिशनल टू इट वी एड अ क्लॉज टू इट एक सेंटेंस लिखा गया है और जब उसमें हम कुछ और बातें ऐड करना चाहते हैं तो हम उसमें क्या ऐड कर देते हैं एक क्लॉज ऐड कर देते हैं तो क्लॉज क्या है एक उपवाक्य है ये वाक्य में प्रजेंट है इसका भी कम्प्लीट सेंस होता है इट हैज़ कम्प्लीट मीनिंग यूजअली इट हैज़ कम्प्लीट मीनिंग इट दीज आर ग्रुप ऑफ वर्ड्स दे ऑल्सो कंटेन अ सब्जेक्ट दे ऑल्सो हैव अ वर्ब all the independent clauses will have a subject and a verb clauses are of many types that we'll see in the next video as i told but for now you can just understand a clause has one subject and one verb see here our example and they are functioning as member of complex or compound sentences is written complex or compound sentences ke member ki tarah ye log function karte hain that we'll see in simple complex compound sentences but let's see the example of clause see the clause here first example i graduated la- last year i is subject graduated verb we got a complete sense that the person graduated last year so it's one clause sentence ek clause hai sentence pe aur is sentence ko simple sentence bhi kehte hain 
where there is one independent clause, a clause which is not dependent on anyone, which is not incomplete. Now, two clause. When I came here, I saw him. Now, see, there is an independent clause. I saw him. You can say, I saw him. I saw him. When I came here, dependent. When we came here, what did we see? I saw him. So, in this sentence, mein, there are two clauses. See the next thing. When I came here, I saw him and he greeted me. So, here there are three clauses in the same sentence. So, this is what clause is. This is dependent or independent clause. What are independent clauses? The clauses which have complete meaning. As the name itself says. Or it's called principal clause or main clause. Bhi kehte the clause which has complete meaning is known as principal clause or main clause. And this is also called independent clause. Okay. So independent clause jab aega, then what it is? It is simple sentence. One independent clause. And when there is more than one independent, there are more than one clauses in a sentence, then it will be either complex or compound. Kaise hoga? We'll see. Now, dependent clause. What are dependent clause? Jab koi clause ka meaning, earth, ek dusre class par dependent hai, nirbhar hai, then it is dependent clause. This dependent clause is also known as subordinate clause. Sub. Matlab kisi pe dependent hai. Okay? Now see. Let us see the types of sentences. Simple sentence will have a single clause. One independent clause. Ek single clause hota hai. Jo ki independent hota hai. One clause which is independent. It means one clause means one verb and one subject. And it cannot take another clause. Example, Ram is playing. I always wanted to become a writer. So see, I is subject. And what that person wanted to become? Become a writer. So here, want is expressed. So one clause, one verb, and a simple sentence. Now next one is compound sentences. Compound sentences are the one which have more than one independent clause and no dependent clause. So you can have two or three independent clauses. Independent clauses, alag alag clauses, jo khud mein independent hai, main hai, aur unko joda jai. Then they combine to form compound sentences. See here the example. I always wanted to become a writer. This is my feeling and it is independent of any other feeling. And she wanted to become a doctor. Now, her feeling, she wanted to become a Dono independent hai. I wanted to become a writer, my feeling. Independent. She wanted to become a doctor. My feeling. This is also what? Independent of anything else. So two independent clauses are there. See two verbs are there. And two independent clauses are there. So here when they have two independent clauses. They are compound sentences. What are complex sentences? Complex sentences have more than one clause. More than one clause. This also have more than one clause. The other one also was having more than one clause. But here, you will have only one independent clause, one main clause, one main sentence. And all other clauses will be dependent on that main clause. So, complex sentences may ek independent clause or baki sare dependent clause hote hain. Compound sentences may ek se zada independent clause hote hain. Or, and they are joined by some specific conjunction. Unko coordinating conjunction kehte hain. And in complex sentences, the independent and the dependent clause is also joined by some conjunction. And here these, uh, these conjunctions are called subordinating conjunction because we join the Main clause with the subordinate clause. I know, see, I know here. I know is dependent on what? What do you know? I know that you always wanted to become a writer. I know that you always wanted to become a writer. So this is it about simple, complex and compound sentences. If you have any doubt, you can share definitely. And now here are some exercises for you. You just have to find out, see what type of sentences. These are very simple. It is an answer is also given. But I just want to do it want you to do it by yourself once and then see the answers. 
Thereafter, these are some exercise questions that you have to do. This is from the whole uh, two sessions that we have seen from the whole lecture it is. Just note it down in your copies. It will be helpful for you in your further studies also. And that's all for this lecture. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.